on the subject of giveaways, I recently did a review for Autec on the new 181 inverter MIG welder, the new really user-friendly user one. Um, Rob says that I can also give that away as a free Christmas draw. I'll probably do a little video on that tomorrow night. This is the valve chest cover off the Harker steam engine with this nice little nameplate on. That's some damage on it. There's a boss here that's been broken off. I think that was a governor mount on it there, I'm not sure. There's a few things I can do with this. I could just mill it off and pretend it was never there. I could bronze weld it and make it structurally sound, but I don't want to put heat on an oil casting like this. So I think what I'll do is I'll build it up with a plastic metal material just to make it look original, make it look authentic. That's going to be done a little bit later on. I'm going to make a joint for it now and I want to get it fitted and hopefully get the engine running again. I've got some decent quality joint material here, proper stuff. And basically we're going to draw around that and we're going to pick the holes up and cut it out with a, with a punch. It's too thick to tap out the way I normally do it. I did have a pen. I did have lots of things. So I put the bastards down somewhere, it really is getting near time for another major tidy up. Right, I found the pen. Yep, that rocks that's fine. Right, I think what I'll do is I'll use a, a transfer punch to pick those centres up. All these holes have different sizes. Not much difference, but there is a difference in them. Right, so now we've got centres picked up. There's a discrepancy in the centres there, but I wouldn't worry about that. The heights are slightly different as well. It's just, it's just what it is. Those ones are a long way out. Okay, so we've got all the holes marked out. I should be able to use those crosses to line up by eye where this punch is going to go to pick the centre of each hole up. That looks pretty good there actually. Looks good. That wasn't very impressive, was it? I've got a bit of harbour in here to where... Uh, that wasn't very good at all, that. It certainly picked the centre up. Right, we need something a lot stiffer than that. A lot stiffer than that. Right, I've got a piece of oak here. And it seems to be working much better on that. And the eyeball the centre, pretty good. This hole cutting set was actually sent to me by a viewer. I don't know who sent it, but I really do appreciate it and it has been used quite a lot. I was cutting some little brass shims with it the other day and it worked well. Getting blocked up with bits of paper at the minute. Nice, neat, tidy job.
spring on a spring on the bench, that's why it's not cut and clean, but it's it's fine that. I need that part cut out, that's for the centre. So what I'm gonna do is put a, a circle right on that corner and then cut it out with a standing knife. I'll just put a little circle in there, same with this one, in fact all four, and then the knife. And finish it off quite nicely. A standing knife and a nice straight edge will cut you no problem. I've got the greatest respect for these bastard things because they're stupid sharp. People say that you don't feel it when you cut yourself with a Stanley blade. I'll tell you what it is, most people don't cut themselves with a Stanley blade because you do feel it. I've had cuts down to the bone with these and it is not nice. Now. Yep, it is. And I've seen lads, that's actually a carpet fit as knife, and they do one cut per blade. A long, one long cut, and they just change the blade. So I've got another resin supply. You use Stanley blades that are perfectly suitable for what I do. See, it's actually knocked the edge off that already. And having the rounded corners means you get a nice. You've got somewhere to cut into because a nice finished result. Nobody will see it, but I know it's there. Right, that bit there will be kept for a, a smaller gas because this stuff's expensive. Decent stuff's hard to get hold of. I was going to use the scissors on those edges, but uh, in fact, I will use the scissors. Which is really nice jointing material. You don't have gasket on steam engines, you have joints. So I'll keep being tooled. Right, one. Five chairs joint. It's not bad. One little tear up there without well, making any difference at all. That's splendid. There's some studs to go in here or bolts to go in here. I've, I've got them to make. My friend Scott made us some nice. Whitworth nuts that go on there and look the port. Full size Whitworth nuts. I don't want to put washers on them or not. I have got some nice flat washers. I don't normally use washers on steam engines for some reason. But those really look the port. I'm going to leave them off because I want the nuts all the way through. They're the old fashioned full size, but we'll have nuts. Some of these go through without having the heads modified. Some of them will need the heads modified to clear the cylinder. Put the nuts on there, I'll mark them to length, and I'll shorten them in the lathe and round the ends off. Yeah, these ones need the, the bullets modifying, that one doesn't. Possibly only the two that need doing. The next part we make is the joint for the cylinder cover. It's not called a cylinder head on a steam engine, it's called a cylinder cover. As you can see, I did nick myself with a Stanley blade. 
I've got a drone set here, a rotary drone set. I'm sure that's what my dad's. Sure it was. He did a lot of drone um, using rotary pens doing little fine detailed drones. I've got quite a few in the house. Um, anyway. I'll tell my picks someone up like I like getting a big lump of me through it. Right, so we're talking 85. So if we make it 43, cut a circle 43. Easiest way is to forget about the end and go on to the one. Under there. So it's going to be 53 if we use that one as a Fifty, fifty-three-ish. I'm gonna put a lot of plaster on. It's neat. <laughs> good this. Right, I've managed to stem the the flow of blood. You'll be watching, doing no laughing at me doing this. Right, so we're gonna cut that circle out. So as is probably the way to do it. near the edge in a few places because it is quite stiff stuff this and we've only got little bits to to cut out little segments segments a good word for a, a Sunday morning right we'll give it a try and see what we can do Cut to the edge and then hopefully we can sort of follow the line round. These are Deb scissors. She'll not be happy if she's watching this. She doesn't normally watch my videos. I think she sees enough of me through the week. Just getting the, dre <laughs> the dreaded cramp in her hand. Yeah, that's fine, that'll be alright. And the slack side, but that's all right. And once I get the cylinder car bullet on, I just trim the outside with a Stanley blade, and it'll make a nice, neat, tidy job. We need to mark the holes in exactly the same method that we did on the uh, on the valve chest cover. I'll just spot them all through, find the approximate centre, spot them through, and then punch them out, and then. Where we we'll go? I've got the sun that top cover joint made. I just trimmed on there with a Stanley blade and I've modified the studs or the bolts to go through, shortened them to the right length. So that's just enough thread poking through. There's nothing worse than being too short or too long. I'm to be just just right. Right. This will make a nice, be a nice, neat job. has lost its edge already. So when you end up cutting yourself when it's got a blunt, you've got a blunt knife, then you start forcing it. So we're putting your blade in. So it's gonna leave a nice neat job like that, which is just the sort of thing we're looking for. I'm gonna temporarily fit the flywheel. We'll put the flywheel on just so we can give it a Give it a run. The flywheel's got to go away and be machined. It's too big for my machine. Your friend Scott's going to clean it up for us. This really is stupid heavy. The flywheel's ridiculously heavy. Oh. Ah. Oh. I forgot about that. Not enough height. 
I'll have to put a couple of chocks on another base plate. Oh. Yeah. Ice is heavy. Right, it's catching that. Just catching that bearer block there. I'll take a little bit off that. Yeah, because the castings comes out there a little bit. There's not much in it. We'll do a little bit of wood butcher and I think. This wood's a rope though, it's more burning it off than it is cutting it. Much better. Right. A little nip on this because I want to be able to take it off again, it's not going on for real. Right, we've got some compressed air on, it's all sealed up, so now hopefully it should, should do that. That's going to be quite nicely. One or two tight spots that'll need adjusting, but basically it's running not so bad. Once again, it's just time to see you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do. It is important. I am getting very near now to the magical 100,000 views. I don't know what happens when you get 100,000 views, but I can't wait to get there to find out. Anyway, thanks for watching.